Today, we're gonna to talk about how to start your design right. And uh, I think we should use this model. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for watching today's video. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to get your design started on the right track. And like I said, we're gonna use this somewhat as a uh, reference model. Thanks to Yale for emailing me, uh, asking me to talk a little bit about this. And it's actually something that have been on my mind uh, a little bit lately because many of you guys model this one up as the absolute beginner series and, and it's all great, but um, one of the problems you many times run into when you're doing uh, CAD design is that you have to go back into your design uh, six months later to make some changes or maybe you gotta hand the design off to somebody else. And how can you make sure that you have a robust, strong model where you can make design changes without you know, without having things go wrong further down in the history tree. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and talk a little bit about parameters and layout sketches. So I have touched on this in previous live streams and previous videos, but I, I just think it's a good thing to kind of like keep on just bringing up and talking about. So first of all, parameters, if you're not familiar with it, if you go to the modify drop down, down at the bottom, you have a change of parameter down here. And actually what I like to do is I like to uh, click on the three dots and pin it to the toolbar. That will bring this menu up here and it just makes it a little bit easier to access. Now, if this is brand new to you, don't worry, we'll, we'll, take, it, we'll take it pretty slow. But if I click on it, open it up, we get this menu opening up. There is uh, kind of three different sections in here. There's favorites, user parameters, and model parameters. The really only one we're gonna worry about right now is the user parameters. You'll see there's nothing in here right now, but if I hit a plus sign, then this menu opens up. And uh, what you can do in here, even before you got anything on your screen, is to start thinking about some of the things you maybe want to control uh, in your design. This is things that maybe the customer will come back and ask you, to change later on. So I talked about that in the past. Think about things that might change on your design. So for example, um, if you're gonna model up part of this electrical box would be, for example, the height. So if I type in height, and then you gotta give it some kind of a value in here. Um, and I know that the electrical box is 38, but you could, you could do whatever, uh, just as a reference. But the height is the important thing. I hit okay, and height shows up here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit another one and I'm gonna maybe call this one length. Type in length and the length of the electrical box is 83 millimeters. And let's just do uh, one more that is gonna be, be the width. Type in width and uh, that on this case is 34. Again, you might not know these values as you're starting out on your design specifically, but um, you know, you could always start out with something reference. Here is where things get interesting. See, if I hit okay, nothing have really, <laughs> nothing have changed on your model. Don't, don't worry about that. Now, if you click on the change parameters again, you will see that they're still there. It's all good. Now, if I go ahead and I say, I wanna open up a sketch, create a sketch, create right here, and uh, maybe I'll do a center rectangle, S key and find my, Send a rectangle right there and draw that up. Now we get the dimensions, right? If I hit the tab key on my keyboard, you'll see I can flip through the two dimensions. And this is actually where I can start controlling with these parameters. You could just type them in, um, you know, like the 34 for, for the width. But instead, if I hit the W on my keyboard, you will see that that width parameter I just put in actually appears. So I can click on that and it, you saw that it just adjusted. Let me just hit tab and go over to the length. Hit L on my keyboard and it will show up the length. And then it will, oops, try it again. And then it will adjust the length to that. Now let me hit enter on it. And you will see that the dimensions I had in my parameters are showing up in here. So 83 and 34 and the FX means that this is tied, this is tied to, to the parameters again. If I go in and click on the parameters, this menu shows up. Let me move it over a little bit to the side here. And um, if I decided to change the, the width to 54, so let's just go into the width parameter here, double click on that right there in the middle and change that to 54, hit enter, 
you will see that the model is changing too. So what we have really done is by this little table here, uh, we have now created some places we can change our model. Now this is going to be this is going to be handy down down the line. So sticking to uh, kind of the same basis of the way that we we modeled up uh, the absolute beginner tutorial, this would be where we decided to start extruding parts out of here. We can do that now. If you remember the um, the absolute beginner video, we actually created different components from the beginning because there is a body and then there's a lid. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stop here and we're going to have our sketch. This is what I'm going to call a layout sketch sitting right here. So now I'm going to go up here and say, I'm going to right click and say, create a new component. And I'm going to call that one a, I'm going to slow left click on it and call that body one or main body or whatever whatever we want to call that. Now this component right now don't have anything in it. Um, if I open up here, uh, besides an, it has an origin, but it doesn't have any sketches in it, but we can use this top sketch that we just created for this body. If I go in and say extrude with that body um, active, I can select on there using this sketch and then I can, I can start typing in uh, a dimension. Now, don't forget that we actually created a height in here. So I can go in here and type H and the height user parameter will show up. And suddenly um, we have we have that that option in here. Now, um, actually, the way I'm going to create this sketch here just to uh, to show you is I'm actually going to you can also go the other way. You can type minus and it can go in, in the other direction. I'm just going to do that so you can see that just in a second why I'm doing that. But what is important is that in this body right now, it only has a, a body in here. It does not have the sketch. The sketch is actually sitting out on the assembly level out here. Okay, so you can switch between activate the, the assembly or you can activate the body in here. Now I'm going to I'm going to keep on kind of like moving on here. So let's go back into to our assembly, activate the assembly, and we can right click here and we can edit the sketch. Now this is the sketch we had before, right? So one other thing we did in uh, in our absolute beginner was we hit O for offset and uh, and we typed in and we can create an offset value in here. And in our case, we made that fall. So I can type in fall right here. So now we have fall, okay? And if I if I stop that sketch, you will see that we are back out. Our body has not changed. to still only have that, that one component in it. But just as before, if I activate the component, I can actually say, okay, let me do another extrude. And if I highlight the, the light bulb so we can see the sketch, then I can select this area here and we can start doing uh, doing this cutout. If you remember from the absolute beginner series, we did some math in here to keep to keep that thickness. But this is maybe where we can go back and use these parameters. See, if we exit out of this, let's just go back out of this and let's go back out to uh, to our main one to edit the sketch. We just did the fall in here. Now you could ask yourself, would it be better then instead of just typing in the fall to actually have that as a parameter, way we can do that is we can go to the change parameter. We can add one, and I'm going to call this one wall thickness. You can't have spaces, so we've got to be all in one. Um, and I'm going to make that fall as you just saw before. Type in fall, and we now have a wall thickness in our parameter dialog. Go back into here and say edit sketch. Let's double click on that fall and instead now we're hitting the, the W and we get the wall thickness parameter. Now it's still fall, nothing is going to change here, but check this out. Now, because this is controlled by a parameter, if we go in and uh, do what we did before, let's go back into the body here. Let's do another extrude and turn that sketch on. Now we now agree on that this thickness is now controlled by that parameter called wall thickness. Um, what before could also be, you know, um, could be fall. 
So if we go over to extend, and instead we say to an object, and we select the bottom of this, but we want to add a little bit of offset. If I in here type minus wall, I can also get that parameter. So what does this mean? It means that right now that wall thickness parameter is controlling this thickness and this thickness. Let me hit OK to that so we can see that. So right now, if we do a section view, section analysis, and let's select the plane that goes all the way through there, this one. If you look at this section view, we we'll go to a little bit aside. This parameter right here, we just added wall thickness. And if I went too fast, just rewind back. This is now controlling not only that sketch distance here, but also the sketch distance in here. So if I go in here and I change this to six and hit enter, see how it changed both this and this here. So this is a way that you can control things with parameters. So when the customer calls and says, well, you know, we need to make some changes to this part, then you can just go in here and change these, these parameters. For example, if we decided that the length was gonna be 103, then that will change that way, right? And still maintain that wall thickness in there um, and so forth. So this is an extremely, a uh, powerful way to to create your designs up front, making sure that um, that that things are, are working in in the proper way. Now I call this layout sketches because it's sitting inside, it's sitting on the assembly level, but controlling uh, bodies further down in in your tree. It's kind of a good way when you have multiple uh, multiple bodies. Now another thing. Now another thing we have on this box is we have these this opening that that kind of like comes out like this, and this is again a place where using these layout sketches can maybe be helpful. So I'm gonna go back and activate my assembly component, and I'm actually just to make my life a little bit easier. I'm gonna draw on the side view here. So I'm gonna select the sketch and select that plane right there and C for circle, and I'm just gonna draw that, that outside opening, what is 28 millimeters. Now that could also be, again, a parameter. D for dimension, and I'm gonna place um, this from this edge right here, and that is 24, and from this point to this point is 16. Again, this could also, um, again, be the parameters that, that you want to use. That, that will be fine. Now, when I stop this sketch, you will see that that sketch is now sitting right here. So we have the top sketch and the bottom sketch. So again, I'm not having any sketches within my, my bodies. I'm controlling it all here with layout sketches. Not saying that you couldn't have sketches later on in your, in your bodies for specific um, you know, details, but for the overall driving these sketches from the parameters can, can, can be kind of neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to extrude. Actually, let me, I'm going to go ahead and make the body active and I'm going to extrude from that circular thing. Now I can't pick it right now. See how I can't pick the circle. Hold down your left mouse button for a few seconds, and then you will actually get a selection box. I can select that profile. Uh, now, <laughs> here's a trick that some people maybe didn't know. You can control, in the standard extrude command, you can control where the sketch is starting from, or where the extrusion is starting from. So in this case, it's from the profile plane. But if I select from an object, I could actually select this outside face, and that means my extrusion is gonna start from that outside face. Now in a absolute beginner video, that is 18. So I'm just gonna extrude that out like that. Again, if this is going a little bit too fast, don't worry, uh, rewind back and, 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 and check this out uh, one more time, like the steps I'm doing. But what I can do now is we can go and use other commands in here. So if I go in and I say, I wanna do the shell command and select this face, 
and this back face here. Make sure I select the right face, this face right here. And again, I could say that I want to do a thickness. And if we select that wall thickness again, then you will see that we now have that same wall thickness is happening on this internal hole from, from our, our wall thickness here. So again, if I change that to six, you will see that everything is changing from, from that. So anybody who ever done like any, any kind of layout parts, you will find that you can control things in here. If you have a, a consideration that, that your customer might call and make a change to how far this extrusion goes, well, then you can easily add that. So if we call that the boss extrude, hit plus sign up here. Let's call it boss, oops, boss extrude. That was originally 18. Type that in there. Now we have that parameter sitting in there. If we go back into that extrusion, what is sitting in here, edit. And instead of having 18, type in B for boss extrude. And now that is controlled by that parameter. Again, if I go up to the parameter up here, the customer calls up and says, oh, we need to change this to 25. Well, all I have to do is change one parameter and, and that is, is, has been modified. And I don't have to go in trying to find the scats and the extrude and, and try to hunt through it. There's certain things that you know that the customer might come back and ask for these parameters in here and using layout sketches is extremely helpful. Again, um, you know, the customer calls and says, we need to change the wall thickness to seven. You can go in and you can change the wall thickness to seven. If you want the length to be, um, you know, 200, you can go ahead and you can type that and the length uh, will be 200. I hope this was useful. Hopefully not too confusing. Just if, if you're a little confused, try to go back, look at it again. Um, but this is a way that you definitely can assure that when you're coming back to a design, you know, I can't remember what I had for dinner last night, <laughs> you know, three months from now, that if you have used these parameters, you can control some of the major things in there. I hope that was helpful. Don't forget, down in the description area of this video, you will find my email address. Any few topics you'd like to see in these videos, absolutely appreciate them coming. If you like this, thumbs up. If you don't, be honest, thumbs down. Absolutely love your comments. You guys are the best. Hope you have an awesome day and take care, folks. Oh, 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 oh,